We'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining us today, um, taking some time out of your day um, and semester. Uh, you know, we hope that you're having a good end to your semester and taking some time to relax as well. Um, we have a lot of great information today and um, some great panelists to share it. Um, if you wanna ask questions uh, throughout each session um, in each panelist, just ask in the chat and our panelists will try to answer them as quickly as possible. But we're also going to have um, a 15 minute um, a question and answer session at the end. Um, and I'm also uh, Ben Molzon. I'm the Engagement and Communications Coordinator uh, for Student Success Services at the College Fund. Um, and I guess for the, um, we can go ahead and get started. The, the first topic today, um, David Bledsoe, the Student Engagement and Communications Manager, who you see on a lot of these, is going to uh, discuss um, uh, virtual tours and uh, TC registrations for the fall with Marissa Lewis, who is um, also a, a student at College of Muskogee Nation. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll hand it over to uh, David. Hi. <clears throat> um, Marissa's not a student, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hi, nice to see all of you again. Uh, my name is David Bledsoe. I'm the Student Engagement and Communications Manager with College Fund. Uh, uh, really, the purpose of our event today is to talk about, um, you know, opportunities that are still available for you to uh, engage with your education plans if you haven't made any for uh, the next school year uh, or for this summer if you're looking for, you know, opportunities for internships or for um, other things to kind of keep developing your skills to stay engaged. That's why we have this. And one of the first things we want to talk about was uh, some virtual tours. Now, there's a lot of schools that have virtual tours where you know they show you your campus and they have some interviews with faculty or things of that nature. But the College Fund has worked with um, several of our tribal college and university partners to do a different type of virtual tour. And it's actually provided by a company called Campus Real. And the best thing about it is that it's the students who are telling you about the schools that they attend. Uh, it has nothing to do with, you know, what a talking head like myself, a staff member or a faculty member does. They're giving you their honest experience, what their experience has been like at the school. We've created a number of these. And I asked Marissa to come on. She's a student success coordinator at College of Muskogee Nation. She's been a great partner of the college funds. She led uh, the creation of their virtual tours, which are now actually on the homepage uh, of their uh, website, of the, the college website, so very easy to find. But I wanted to bring her on to talk about some of the students and, and what they share, uh, what kind of information you can get. And then I also wanted her to talk about travel college registration opportunities, because a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of travel colleges that are still open that you can register for for the fall uh, and prepare uh, either right now or after the summertime. So she's also gonna talk about that. So Marissa, if you could introduce yourself and, and present some information, that'd be great. And I'll, I'll wrap up with some, uh, just some links to uh, some of our other tours. I'm not sure if your audio is working, Marissa. <laughs> if you can't, uh, if you can't, if you need to restart or, or rejoin the meeting or something like that, um, unfortunately, we're not, I don't, we're not hearing anything on, on the, the call. Do you have maybe a microphone or a headset or something you have connected or? Okay, well, Marissa is going to probably try to rejoin, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and show you um, the, um, the homepage that I was telling you about that they have for their school. Let me bring that up. So this is the homepage for College of Muskogee Nation, which is a great school in Oklahoma. Marissa, can, are, can you try to talk again? Uh, still not working. <laughs> Not sure what's going on, but 
just keep trying to see if there if there's a microphone. But this is their their homepage. Like I said, they're a great school in Oklahoma. Um, they have a lot of information about opportunities that they have both, of course, during the school year, but also during the summer. But as I scroll down here, you'll see they have a section that's called Ravens and Their Stories, which actually has all these student stories that I was talking about through this, through this uh, platform called Campus Real. So if you click on that, you'll actually see a number of actual students from the school. You can just click and learn more about their particular journey. So let's just take Jamie here. I actually know who Jamie is. Um, and if you look at the videos that are listed here, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna play this one right now, but if you look at the videos that are listed here, that talks about a, a few different things that she's experienced during her, her time at College of Muskogee Nation. So she talks about, in this video, she talks about learning uh, during COVID. She talks about, uh, in another video, the application process for, um, for College of Muskogee Nation. She talks about clubs in another video. And let me, let me see if I can get the audio on for this. We can, um, we can actually look at one of these just really quick. So let me back her up. Unmute, let's go. Muskogee Nation offers other ways for a student to be successful through our club organizations. Some of these clubs provide travel opportunities, internship opportunities, and job opportunities for the student to be successful in their career field. Some of these organizations here at the College of Muskogee Nation include Tribal Leadership Circle, TLC, Phi Theta Kappa, PTK, American Indian Science and Engineering Society, ACES, and we also have another club that's called AHEC, which is the American Indian Higher Education Consortium. Through these organizations and through these clubs, it allows the students to become more independent and to determine the outcome of what these clubs are going to do and organize for the students here at the College of Muskogee Nation to help make the campus life thrive and to also help get other students into these organizations and encourage them to become a member to participate in student activities. So that was a really good example. And there's, like I said, there's a lot of students that are that there and they're talking about specific things that they're involved in. I know that Jamie is involved with um, ACES, uh, which a lot of you probably know of, um, which is a great science STEM uh, engineering uh, club. And they provide conferences, regional and national conferences, but that's another way that students can kind of get involved. Um, can you hear me and, at all? Yes, oh, we can hear you, Marissa, okay. it's amazing. Oh. I was like, I've never had that issue before. Sorry. Um, That's okay. I took everybody through. I took them through the homepage and then uh, played one of the videos from Jamie talking about okay. clubs on campus. But yes, feel and free to, to talk about okay. what all yeah. Speech. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. And yeah, Jamie, she is on Student Senate. She is a very good um, active student. Um, but yes, yeah, she shares her experience and another, I don't know what video that was, but she talks about how we handled COVID and as far as like social distancing and giving out laptops and those different kinds of services. Um, she was able to talk about that. And so Jamie, she graduated this um, May with her degree. And then also on the other videos, we have Samantha Lackey. She graduated the, she graduated last year and she actually works for her here in the Student Success Center. And we actually have a lot of CMN students that have graduated that are back here working for us. Um, just to mention that we have, you know, Crystal Wynn, who's our Dean of Student Affairs. She was a graduate of CMN, then went to OU. Um, we have TJ Berryhill, he is our grant um, coordinator now. He just came back this week. He graduated from CMN, then went to Haskell. school. So, and then we have several others. Um, so I find that very, to me, um, very special because we have so many graduates that are coming back and working for us. So, oh, sorry. I got it to work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yes. Um, so you get to, you can hear Jamie talk about that. And then Samantha, she talks about how, um, in her video, how she, um, struggled and didn't know about coming back to work. She, before she worked at Mazio's and 
then she started getting her education and now she works here at CMM, CMN and um, she goes through that whole process of not knowing what to do and then where she found resources. And so um, another student, so we had Samantha, Jamie, and then um, Cheyenne Yarji, he did a video for us. He was a housing student. So you got that perspective on what it's like in the dorms and the dormitory. And then he also had a different experience as far as he started school and then he got into a serious accident and um, had to have surgery and everything and lost memory and couldn't walk and had to redo, learn to redo all that. So when he came back to us, you know, he um, was in a wheelchair and I remember um, having to enroll him in a semester, his next semester. And, you know, everyone just worked with him because even his speech was um, altered and things like that. So he talks about that whole process. So you can feel that or see that in the video and see how, you know, um, appreciative of that that he is and that we were able to you know work with him he was able to come back to school and he's on student senate too now um so i feel like we have really good students here and um you know there's just several opportunities for you guys to take advantage of um and then our last student was corey hicks he did a video for us and he's still in um, this process so he's like the newer student that's i think he this is his first year so you can kind of see his perspectives on um, you know, starting this process because most of them are kind of at the end of the process. So um, definitely check out those videos and hear what they have to say because it's you know, coming from their, from their experiences as a student and not from our perspective. So it's really uh, refreshing to hear from the students and what they have to say. And that's, that's great that you have so many different perspectives, not mm -hmm. only from you know, older students, but new students a lot of different topics. And of course, with your institution, you have a lot of um, students that are transferring on to uh, larger schools, to four-year schools or to graduate programs and things of that nature, which is right. really important to their journey. You really support them. I, I think that's the thing that we hear most from tribal college students is that they've gotten such great support and preparation to help them be successful in the next step of their journey. If they you know, are just getting an associates and want to get a bachelor's or uh, they want to go to graduate school or attend other things. There's a lot of really good resources that you, and, you know, just like with you, with you, I know you personally, you're a great yeah. support to students and they know you by name. And, you know, that's very common at, at tribal colleges. Right. So I am over. Oh yeah. I missed my whole introduction. So, <laughs> so hence Jay, I still go. My name is Marissa Lewis. So um, yes. And I'm the student success center coordinator here at the college of Muskogee nation. I've been with the tribal college for 10 years now. So um, yeah, I love it here. Um, we have like at the Student Success Center, we are over um, testing, over outreach, your first year experience. We teach orientation. We do um, the learning center, tutoring, and then retention. If you aren't coming to class, if you don't come to class, then we give you a call. Like, is everything okay? Do you need some support services? and all those types of um, questions. So yes, they really do get to know us. And like I said, with um, we're also part of Achieve the Dream. So um, that first year experience, our Student Success Center staff is on that. So, you know, when you first enroll, you're gonna enroll with us. We're going to be in your orientation class and then we're gonna help you through, navigate through your first you know, year here at CMN. So yeah, we get to know our students fairly well. And that's what I tell everyone. We're small enough where, you know, the high, our um, student population in the fall is usually around 200 to like 250 students. So we're still fairly small where I feel like we get to know everybody and it's almost like we become family. Like we're that close, I feel like with our students and staff, so yeah. Yeah, that was great. Very well. <laughs> and, and can you talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, just in a part of that is because you're a smaller institution that you don't have these big lead times for application or registration mm -hmm. about what what students can still do specifically at College of Muskogee Nation, but it's also very similar to a lot of other tribal colleges. Right. So um, on our website, which is cmn.edu, you know, if you are interested in going, we do have um, online registration where you can um, apply online. And then we've also, since COVID has started, where we can um, do it over the phone if you're not able to come to campus. And um, yeah, 
we are small enough, like you said, that we have, you know, one admissions officer, one registration, you know, just like departments of one, but, you know, we're able to still service everybody as well. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, you can go online, fill out your application online, and then um, give me a call, give admissions a call, and um, follow up from there. So, yes, it's very, you know, we're small enough that we're also like hands on wear. <laughs> Sorry, it's all Jack's food. Where we can uh, give you, provide those services to you. Yeah, and, and that's very common with, with a lot of the tribal colleges and universities. They still have registration that is open for the fall. Some of them right. will be registering right up until classes start or after. Yes, and even like this week is our first um, week of summer semester. So we just started on Monday for our, we're a trimester. So we go um, fall, spring, and summer. So our summer trimester just started this week and you can enroll all the way up until today, that first week of class you can enroll all the way up until that middle of that week and then add and drop classes. And then our fall enrollment for 2021 starts June 14th and ends August 27th. So yeah, there's still time if you, you know, haven't started this process. Um, yeah, we get a lot of students that come in that the week of and try to do everything. And um, we have a really good admissions officer, Kathy McCormick, and she, she'll get if she can't get it, she'll try to get it. She goes out of her way to call institutions. I need this transcript and get you through testing and put in classes and whatever it is, she's, she's on it. So we do have students that come the week of and try to get everything done and some can and some can't get it done. So yes, yeah. Um, and lots of friendly late. people. Yeah, it's not too late. To lots start. of friendly people like you to help. And right. I, I went ahead and posted uh, in the chat links to several other of those campus real tours that are yes. uh, for other schools around the country. So you can just the same way that there are students at College of Muskogee Nation sharing about their experience in those schools as well. They have videos of their students talking about their experience, about programs at schools and the support that they've gotten. So you can learn a little bit more and then reach out to um, you know, an admissions officer or someone else at the school to learn more and hopefully get registered by the fall if you haven't made those plans. Correct. So check out those links. We're gonna be adding those to our website. They're not on the, the, the College Fund website now, but if you like with College of Muskogee Nation, obviously it's on their homepage, which is very easy to access, but you can click on any of those and explore some of the other schools around the country. So I think that's it for our portion. So thank you so much, thank Marissa. You. You're welcome. Great. Thank, you. thank you, David and Marissa. And Marissa, I apologize for the the mix up on title. Um, oh, if anyone yeah. has any questions for David or Marissa, you know, you can please put them in the in the chat and they'll answer them um, the best they can at the end of our session or while uh, or while it's going on. Um, for the next portion, um, Amber, who's a career and readiness coach uh, for the Student Success Services team, is going to um, talk about different internship opportunities, um, our Connect platform um, that students can, can connect to and just any other uh, last minute opportunities, um, you know, uh, that we're offering right now. So I guess I'll hand it off to, to Amber if she's ready. Great, thanks Ben. Hey everyone, um, my apologies for not having my camera on. I promise that my presentation is bright and summary. <laughs> well, as summary as PowerPoint will allow. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put in a link in the chat box and you'll, you'll, you can feel free to navigate it now, but you'll see what it's for here in just a moment. Oh, my screen is frozen. <laughs> Okay, can you can you see the full screen now? All right, great. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Amber Grant, and I'm the career readiness coach here at the College Fund. Um, I'm going to go over briefly some career experience opportunities that um, are still available to you and that we're offering through the College Fund. Just to get started off, I want to talk about the Student Professional Development Grant. 
Um, this is a new grant that was um, developed this year and it's designed to support students who are interested in participating in um, experiential learning that can provide professional development and career exploration opportunities. And so it's, it's an opportunity for students to create projects that empower and support their personal and professional development. Um, and so this, this grant opportunity is intended to um, develop a student's hard and soft skills, um, their understanding of career development um, and your consideration of a career pathway. So if you, for, for example, last year we funded a student who um, is going into the medical field and she kind of did like an, an internship with um, a medical facility that she was already working with but wasn't getting funded for. So through her submission process, she um, uh, submitted her application and we were able to, to grant her um, funding for her, her experience. And so um, there is a process for applying. Um, we don't have a link to the application. We've been sending them out through emails. Um, I think after this presentation, I'll connect with Ben and David and just see how we can get um, that, that application to you all. But um, the process is pretty straightforward. Once you get the application, review it, um, submit it, um, submit the completed application back to us. Um, co the college fund staff will review the application um, and set up a meeting um, to just kind of discuss the details of the application with you. Um, and upon approval, we'll grant you funding for your project. Um, uh, but before that happens, you will need to, to complete a W-9 because um, you will be funded directly for this opportunity and it is taxable income. Um, and then after you've uh, sent your W-9, your completed W-9 back to us, we'll get you a, a check cut and you'll begin the project. So um, it's pretty straightforward. It's a career experience opportunity um, that we are looking forward to funding students to engage with over summer. Um, initially, the application window closed in May, but we do have more funding for this opportunity. So it's been extended to the end of this year. I encourage you all to apply sooner than later because although we have more funding, it is limited. So it is first comes first serve. Um, so if you're interested in getting funded, I would encourage you to apply as soon as possible. Okay. And that. All right, so um, some of you may be familiar with the Connect platform if you are engaged with one of our student cohorts. Um, it's, it's, a fam it's a familiar pilot um, platform that we started this year. Connect is a multi-functional um, online platform. Hoping that this link works. Can you all see my, the web page loading? No? Okay, let me see if I can. Okay. So um, Connect is, a, is a, an online platform that we uh, launched this year. And the goal is to help students navigate their future. Um, and so, although it is primarily career focused, we do have some academic elements that are um, kind of in, um, looped into this platform. I just wanna draw your attention. Can you see my screen? I'm not sure if you guys can see the- Yes, yeah, so we, we can see the Connect platform now. Great, thank you. Um, I just wanna draw your attention to um, this bar up here. It's, it has eight. Um, tabs, and these are the main ones you're going to navigate after you've um, gone in and um, created your profile. So the link that I added to the chat box is um, the link to the page where you can go in and um, create your Connect profile. You will need to, to create one before you can have access to this platform. Um, when you open up your, your profile page, it, you should have a landing page that looks similar to mine, a little bit different. Um, but then you'll, I encourage you all to kind of um, jump around and just see what it has to offer. Um, under the networking tab, it's pretty straightforward. 
Um, it's filled with professionals that work both within the college fund and outside of the college fund. Um, there are professionals that work from within the education and nonprofit sector all the way up to um, more known larger companies like Nike. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for you to come in and kind of um, expand your network or begin your network. Um, when I explain connect, the, the networking, the connect networking platform to people, um, I like to compare it to LinkedIn um, because it, re it, it works similar to LinkedIn. It's like our, our internal LinkedIn um, and it's kind of a treat for our students because they're getting a more direct um, avenue to a lot of these professionals. So um, this is the networking page. We also have opportunities that are uploaded pretty um, frequently. Um, and as you can see, we have one that was just uploaded um, in April. Um, it provides deadlines when you need to apply. You can click on it and it will give you an overview of what the opportunities entail. So depending on what your background is, what, what your major is, what your interests are, I encourage you all to definitely explore the opportunities that we have available. It looks like we're on the jobs tab right now, the jobs post right now. But if you click on job type and you're looking for internship opportunities, we usually have those made available as well. So again, take advantage um, of the opportunities platform um, and start poking around and looking at the opportunities that have been made available by professionals who have posted these opportunities within our network. And the groups, uh, the groups tab is um, a really neat area where students are encouraged to go in and uh, form a network with their their student peers. Um, we have groups that are designed uh, with more of a STEM focus, more of a medical focus. Um, we're, we're uh, continuously building out our groups for students to join so that you can uh, find a niche that suits your interests um, and that you can engage in um, conversations and discussions, pose questions with um, your colleagues and peers who also hold um, similar majors or, or interests. And then events, we don't have anything uploaded right now, um, but typically um, when this page is filled out, you will see something like what we're doing, a webinar um, that will be listed. It'll have the time and date um, and you can mark that on your calendar through the Connect platform. The discussion tab, um, I think is my favorite area within the Connect platform because Students are allowed are able to go in and uh, post questions, comments, and professionals both within the college fund and outside of the college fund um, can answer those questions um, from their professional background and experience. Um, so if you have questions and you're not really sure who to ask, definitely go into the discussion board and ask away. And as you can see, we love to engage and make sure that you're getting the resources and the answers that you're looking for. And then resources, um, right now this is a career, re the career resources tab, the resources tab is career focused, um, but these are uh, past webinars and recordings that are linked to our YouTube page. So if you're looking for more information on um, how to find, um, um, internship opportunities or, um, you know, what does career success look like within Indian country? Tell me more about soft skills. You can go in, um, click on these modules and find past recordings that may be able to provide you with more information. And then of course the share tab, um, if you're really excited about this platform after you've developed your profile, you can share it with a friend via email or um, via social media. I'm going to jump back into the presentation here. Okay. Just a quick re recap again, follow the link that's shared in the chat box, create your profile before you um, have access, before you can have access to the Connect platform and network away. It really works to your advantage. Um, we have some really tremendous professionals who are um, engaged with that platform. Um, and then don't have time to go over it today, but another piece um, that some of you may be familiar with are our educational pathway modules that are built on, um, that are built within the Connect platform 
as well. And so those, the Connect modules are designed to help you um, get more hands-on experience, um, a hands-on virtual experience with um, both academic and um, career skill sets. So if you're looking to build, um, build out a resume or even create your resume, build out um, or um, tweak your cover letter and you need tips or tricks, you can go into our modules and it will provide a breakdown of what a resume or cover, cover letter, for example, should look like. Um, and if you want to engage even further with the College Fund staff, just to get some critiques some feedback on your resume or cover letters, um, there's an option to reach out to us as well. So I know that was a lot on the Connect platform, but again, I encourage you to go um, create a profile and just uh, putz around a little bit. And then do you still have time to apply for internships part-time and temporary full-time employment? Yes, of course you do. Um, we do encourage students to apply at the start of the school year. I know that's a very hectic time for people, but that's when internships first hit the market. So if you're looking to um, stay competitive and demonstrate to employers that you're serious about an opportunity, definitely try to apply at the start of the school year in fall when, when, you, when classes begin. Um, where can you find internship and job opportunities for summer? I'm going to start off and say the American Indian College Fund. Um, we send out internship emails, um, if not every week, every other week. Um, and we get opportunities from our partners who then um, and will then share those opportunities through email blasts, through internship email blasts. So depending on the major that you have listed, um, under your profile when you uh, enrolled in your scholarship at the start of the school year, you'll get internship emails um, that are relevant to your, um, your major. And then um, we also send out newsletter blasts. David Bledsoe is amazing at sharing um, collective resources around the college fund um, that highlight scholarship opportunities, um, you know, internship opportunities, job opportunities, um, and sharing those with students who are, again, maybe a part of our internship or our, our email lists. But if you're not a part of the email list, you may have seen some of these newsletters on our social media. Um, I know that uh, David likes to post to Facebook especially. Um, so again, if you're not connected with one of our, um, our, in, our email chains, um, join us on Facebook and start following us so you can get, so you can catch wind of um, the newsletter blasts that are shared on a regular basis. And then connect, we just went over connect. Again, I encourage you um, set up a profile, um, start networking, getting to know people who are in your industry. And then you never know, hopefully, maybe one day they can help get you a foot in the door. And then I wanna go over a few job search sites, LinkedIn. Um, I talked about this a little bit um, when going over connect, but LinkedIn is a really great platform, um, not only are you able to build a profile that provides a snapshot of your um, career experience or your education experience, um, but you're also able to apply to jobs directly through LinkedIn. So it will allow employers to see your professional profile um, and that's connected to your, um, to your job application. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. So I encourage you, if you've not already, create a LinkedIn profile and make sure that you have a very professional profile picture um, when developing your LinkedIn. And then Indeed is a massive um, collective of job and internship opportunities. Really, it's worldwide. Um, but I, I just checked it today and I saw internships that, you know, run the gambit as far as um, majors and uh professional background. So if you're still looking for internships or part-time opportunities, um, look into Indeed. Also look into Monster. Monster um, operates similar to Indeed. And then of course, if you're stumped and you're looking for something more specific, go ahead and do a Google search. Um, I use the example business internships. You just type in business internships and then um, um, opportunities should pop up, should populate um, when typing that in Google. And then also check out your school bulletin boards. If you're looking for something more local, um, something that's more tangible and closer to home, check out your school bulletin sites. Um, they'll 
most likely have opportunities that are community-based and also um, perhaps even opportunities that are based out of the school itself. Um, so I know that was a quick rundown and there are probably a lot of questions in the chat and I'm happy to answer them at the end here. And um, I think after the presentation, I'll go in and start answering those questions as well if Jack hasn't already. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, my email, uh, the careers email is careers at collegefund.org. And again, my name is Amber. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you, Amber, for all that information. I know it was a lot of information. I think Jack is uh, um, answering questions there. And I've also put some um, different links uh, to our social media and to those, um, the newsletters um, in the chat as well. Um, but please uh, ask any questions in the chat. We'll try to get to them at the end um, of the session here. But next, I wanted to move to uh, Jack, who, who joined us um, just recently. He's the Senior Program Manager for Career and Readiness. Um, in employment at the College Fund. Um, and he's going to discuss opportunities um, with a new partner that we have, uh, Greening Youth Foundation. So I'll let uh, Jack take over at this point. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, so the um, conversation that we're gonna have right now is basically just sort of an extension of what Amber shared. So we've been working with uh, Greening Youth Foundation for the past three years and trying to build the capacity to um, link students to um, internships specifically that are focused on environmental science, natural resources, land management, um, the outdoor industry, um, just to, um, because we believe that, you know, there, there, there's not a strong representation of a diverse workforce within those, um, within those industry tracks. Um, and then sometimes it's very hard to get um, Native um, students specifically, because I've worked with Native students and federal agencies to get them enrolled, you know, in, um, I guess in the uh, the career track or career pathways for um, students um, into those positions, you know, at um, the Park Service and Forest Service, um, just to name a few. So what um, <clears throat> what we done what we've done is sort of created some relationships with a variety of different, um, I'll say, organizations, um, for lack of a better way of defining them, to be useful to sort of linking, you know, that. Um, that, that capacity that we have with students to get them into positions that may be of interest. And so I'm gonna go through their website and just show you where to look for an internship. And then we were gonna have somebody from the, uh, an intern from one of their programs talk a little bit about her experience and she may still show up. I'm not right, let's see her in the, in the, in the room. But, you know, she's been um, interning with, the, with Greening Youth for about two years now, and she's just going to be uh, picked up into full-time employment at the, um, at the end of this year. She, it, it would have been sooner, but uh, the pandemic sort of forced them to stall the process and sort of switch her to, you know, a, a, a virtual internship, you know, uh, capacity until they could get something worked out. So, I, you know, there's something that's very valuable about the internship experience when you're thinking about employment. And I, I don't necessarily know if, if um, students are um, always aware how internships play into employment because we think that with a degree, we're gonna land a job, but there has to be, you know, the, uh, there's also like the, the building of skill sets and the understanding of what it feels like to sort of work in a, a professional environment, you know, at a very basic level, but it's also just sort of knowing like, what does it look like to work in a space that sort of um, is, facilitating your interests. So if you have interest in the land, like what does it look like to work for the Forest Service who, you know, manages land? Or what does it look like to work with the National Park Service, which has such a, you know, a hard reputation and relationship with tribes, but, you know, it would be better to be inside of it to learn how it's building those relationships and partnerships with those tribal communities and digging deeper into those dialogues. So those are some of the things I think are really critical when you're thinking about the, the way to sort of uh, orchestrate the next steps. Um, so I'm gonna go to just sharing my screen and we'll go through some of these websites so you can see what they look like. And I hate this part because I have to navigate the bar. Wait, let me go back here.
Thanks for your patience. So this is Greening Youth's um, Foundation's website, and these are the programs that they have. We're working with them right now in reference to a bridge program, which is a hiring program. So students who have graduated and are looking for jobs, we're looking for students to uh, apply. We just did the first round, and we'll be looking at a, um, <clears throat> doing this uh, like twice a year. So the next one will be in the fall, then we'll have one in the spring. So, you know, if you're interested in working in some of the, the partners that we have with this with this organization, then uh, we will be sending out information um, about the next hiring um, uh, event that we'll be doing. And then they have the uh, connecting interns, which is just a, a, a you know, information session about what they do. Partnerships, this lists some of the main partnerships that they do have. And um, the youth conservation is another partner they have and some of the programs that they're doing. We're working on trying to develop one for the tribal colleges and universities right now. So that's gonna be underway in probably about a year. Uh, so if you're looking for an internship, um, you know, you can check this website as well and just hit this careers button and then um, navigate down to their open opportunities, positions available. And <clears throat> you'll have a list here. You can look in this um, portion, the navigating tool here, and you can just click on internships and then search jobs and it will um, adjust the, the search page. Something I'll show you too that you can see that I can't is that you'll notice that all of these internships have locations that are not in um, specific areas that are located in where tribal communities are. Most of them are on the East Coast. Um, if you have questions about that, it's always good to sort of reach out to uh, Kennedy Reddick, who is one of the main, you know, uh, um, contacts for the internship program, and also Shatiba. Most of these are not flexible in reference to thinking about whether they can be virtual or not, because everyone is um, shifting from that virtual to in-person space. But um, you can talk to Kennedy and Shatiba about the support that they can offer to sort of get you out there. Um, there is some resource to that. And if um, not, let me see, there's another page here that I wanted to show. I have to stop sharing again. There is this program called Native American Jumpstart, and they are another um, partner of ours that offers grants for students. So you can come to this uh, website and just check, and they, al they also do internships, but they pr predominantly are trying to push their grant program, which is to um, give students a small stipend for travel and relocation. You can just um, hit the apply button. It'll bring up an application. The grants are um, $500. And if you let them know that you're coming from the American Indian College Fund or referred to them through the American Indian College Fund, um, they will um, more than likely fund you. I'm just gonna be pretty frank and honest about that. So that's one of the other partnerships that I think is pretty valuable when you're thinking about moving forward and thinking about what you um, might need support on uh, in reference to the an internship program. Um, a couple of other um, opportunities, you know, we Amber listed a few in, in thinking about um, looking for jobs like Indeed and Monster. You know, again, I, I, I highlighted, ACES, highlighted ACES, which is the American Indian Society or Science and Engineering Society. They have internships and sometimes they are having, well, right now they're having difficulty in finding students to apply for them. And I put the link into the chat and you could check their website to see what internships they also have available right now. Um, they also have a uh, amazing ca career fair. So if you're thinking about like, if it's not for the summer, then thinking about like the, how to attend their conference in the fall and they have um, access to um, a, like a large um, selection of employers. Um, employers like, you know, um, Northrop Grumman, Google, Facebook, <clears throat> just to list some of the big names and, and the way that they have partnered with those corporations is that they have smaller internship programs and they hire um, students to sort of work with those organs, those corporations. Another um, place to look is the First Nations Development Institute. Um, and I'll put the link in here as well. But they too are looking for interns on, on for some of their projects. And most of their projects are basically about community development and economic development. And they do have a, a specific 
um, program, I think right now that they're looking for students who are interested in agriculture and food sovereignty. And I don't know if I can find that in the short time that I have available, but I will definitely put the link to the, the website for you to find at least a, a search around for that information. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about. Um, let me go back here real quick. I think that is it for me. Uh, if you have any questions about what does this look like? And, you know, of course, to what Amber shared, you know, there, you still have time. Um, a lot of the internship programs, you know, if you're, you're thinking about the future, there's still time, you know, for last minute searches. But what I would recommend is if you don't find anything, you know, now, and you're looking for specific internships, um, then I would probably be prepared and sort of do your searching now for next year. Because most of those programs, they look for, start looking for interns and start filling positions you know, in the, in middle, in the middle of fall. And so um, some programs actually are now looking like the Greening Youth Foundation, they have rolling internships. So they'll have internships that'll probably become available in, in summer that will be starting in fall. And they have sometimes in the middle fall for spring. And, you know, the, the opportunities that we're looking to, you know, fund and Amber touched on the, the professional development grant. Most of those can be used to, to help fund, you know, internship pro pro programs or projects and, um, or develop them. You know, a couple of the projects that we're looking at and we turned into internships, one is that we funded a student who is interested in ag um, science. And so she is uh, impregnating a cow and then is gonna raise the cows from um, birth into breeding to show. And so we're looking at trying to support her over two, you know, two semesters. And each of those semesters is basically going to be an internship, you know, project for her. She's aligned it with a, um, a faculty advisor so that she'll be getting credit for those. And then um, we're working with a variety of other students who are doing some amazing stuff. You know, some of them are organizing career exploration, you know, events for students. Um, one is actually funding a project so she can go to um, Pine Ridge for the summer to, to work with a veterinarian um, effort to um, with the with the with the Lakota communities and then another student she's actually she already has a small you know um, cattle herd but she's trying to figure out like how to be supportive to her tribe so she's working with um, with a variety of different offices in Chickasaw um, interviewing them understanding their needs and then she's going to be taking that information and then working with her um, um, academic advisor in the fall to create another project that will sort of uh, help develop sort of a marketing plan for some of those um, offices that she's working with. And so she's just learning a little bit more about like, what does this look like for, um, for her own edification? Uh, uh, David just put in the link the um, internship for AHEC. AHEC is the American Indian Higher Education Consortium. And they are the, uh, I guess the mother umbrella program of the college fund and they work with all tribal colleges and universities. And, you know, we were developed from them to be supportive to, to tribal colleges and universities and doing fundraising and offering scholarships from private institutions. So that's how we fit in with that, with that organization. Um, let's see if there's anything else. I think that might be all that I have right now. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Yes, Amanda, I will send that. Make sure that you get that information specifically because I think that's up your alley for sure. And they do offer small grants and that might even be, a, a, they do offer small grants for community efforts. And I think that you might qualify for the work that you're doing with your current project with Ford C3. So um, that's something that to consider. And, you know, even to think about, like, we have an ambassador program, you know, um, we'll have a, a truncated version of it this year, but we do open up the applications uh, every March um, and then look for students that we can bring on board. And Amanda um, Reese, who's in the room today, she's one of our ambassadors, and we funded her to do a community project, and she's focused in on developing a gardening project for her community and has incorporated so many other like really unique uh, capacities within that project that it's, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, our funding is, I don't think it's very large, but it's, can, it can be pretty powerful. You know, the way that she is, she has orchestrated and developed her project has been pretty phenomenal. And it's, it's gone through many iterations and 
we're thankful for every iteration and we're also very glad that she's been able to hone it to like get some amazing work done for that for her community and for herself and the learning was pretty amazing so so you know reach out to us and just sort of inquire about things that we have available we're 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 building our ability to be useful in this space a lot more um and you know as david mentioned you know we're talking about the high school space and growing up um growing some more opportunities to think about what the experiential education and you know internship components would look like for those for those students as well because that's something where we want to lean into and then we also have information about postdocs um or not postdocs post baccalaureate or you know after your four-year degree programs there are a couple programs that are now um being filtered to me that, that they're looking for students to they're like fellowships which means once you graduate with your four-year degree and you don't know what you want to do you could apply to this program and possibly get funded for a year to do something like an internship or a research project and there are a few that we have and i don't have the information with me right now unfortunately but i know that there are two that i'll um will be wanting to sort of put the word out about soon to look for those as well as an opportunity well thank you jack in order uh for time constraints and that see if anyone has any questions at the moment i know there's a lot of information today um but we also are going to send out um, an email with uh, all of these links um, and as many as possible to um so that you can get them if you miss them during this and there will also be a recording attached to that email as well but if you have any questions right now please put them in the chat and we'll try to answer them um as quickly as possible um but there's also going to be um a giveaway of prizes, and I think David was going to put a, um, a survey um, for everyone to fill out in order to get um, some giveaway prizes. But I think everyone um, put their emails um, in the chat. Um, but yes, please just reach out with any questions to everyone. Um, I'm putting the link in now, so you can <laughs> all win some prizes. <laughs> so we have a we have our survey monkey uh, thing. We'd love to get your feedback about this event and the information we share, but you can also enter your name in to win uh, some of the prizes that we have. We always have great prizes for all of our events online. And there it is. It's in the chat now. Uh, another thing that I'll mention too, um, Marissa talked about um, AHEC. Uh, and I think one of the student, student videos that we shared earlier talked about AHEC as well too. That is uh, basically the association of all of our tribal colleges and universities are a great organization. And the opportunity that I posted a link to uh, is on our connect site. So I just took the link from our connect site and put it on there. You can still apply for funds from them up until the beginning of June. So that is an active opportunity that you can apply for. And that's working with faculty and staff at tribal colleges, uh, I think for research and other work that they're doing. They are always looking for people. They have grant funds. It's, it's a great opportunity to check out if you haven't done that already. And I don't know if Marissa wants to jump in and share anything before we hit the end of our event. Um, you know, she of course is on the front lines there at College of Muskogee Nation, but you could apply for grant funds to work at College of Muskogee Nation this summer if you wanted. Well, I didn't see any extra questions in the chat, but I did see emails. We do have uh, emails um, through you logging in on your uh, and registering on your Zoom. So we'll gather those and uh, send all the information um, here shortly towards the end of the week. But um, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. So I, you know, we appreciate everyone joining us and thank you to all the panelists for all the information. Um, and we hope you have a, a great end to your uh, semester and good luck on finals. Bye everyone.